Welcome to Musik und Frieden Berlin, where I'm with Ginger, or Ginger, or how do you say it? <laughs> we say Ginger. Ginger, that's right. Ginger. okay, great. Uh, so you are back to Europe from uh, this, uh, North America and actually Philippines. So um, how was it in uh, North America and, you know, of all the places, Philippines? I must say that was beyond all expectations. Yeah, we are so surprised to see so many people who came for the first time at our shows and actually gave us a huge feedback and support. And yeah, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, I, I didn't have chance to thank you, but here we are. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks to everyone who came to see us in North America and in Philippines. It's just, that, that was something overwhelming. Okay, and uh, the Cloud Factories tour continues now in Europe. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you are actually coming back to Finland too in uh, Saari Helvetti Festival in Tampere. Exactly. So uh, what are your expectations for the European leg? Well, our expectations, again, uh, uh, they are over, overcome. By, by by now because we have all these sold out shows like today like in Copenhagen and Frankfurt is sold out and uh, it's it's just wonderful I mean uh, we we couldn't even think that it, it would be this way like like now it's the way it is going on now so and uh, we're just we're just looking forward to absolutely crazy shows everywhere and including summer festivals all this summer period and we, we can't wait until we go back to North America and play there again yeah, in the end of uh, July. So <laughs> I, I hope it's going to be just better and better and better and absolutely crazy. Okay, yeah, and uh, the summer of festivals is coming up, and uh, unfortunately I wasn't there, but I heard that your last visit to Finland in Kustok was an unforgettable gig, so for you guys, how do the festival gigs differ from uh, club gigs, for example, tonight in Berlin? Mm. Well, it's hard to say. No, it's easy to say, because, you know, when you are doing uh, club shows, it's quite... Uh, under control like everything is under control but like most of the times but when you are doing festivals uh, like expect like unexpected really because um, yeah it's it's really hard to deal with things that like technical problems and stuff like that so yeah it it's quite um, frustrating frustrating if you see like some things that are not really that they are not supposed to be like you know what I mean <laughs> yeah yeah because basically festivals when you play festivals it is not your stage yeah you just come there and play you don't have a sound check most of the times so you just do line check and the, like Tatiana say says just expect the unexpected and same with the crowd if you play a club show like tonight just most of the people come to see you if you play festivals. These are just people who come to a festival. Yeah, and uh, on one hand, there are a lot of them, much more than you would pull yourself to your club show. On the other hand, these are not your fans, and you never know what the reaction would be. Fortunately for us, it has always been most times, 99%. It was awesome all the time, but you never know, again, as Tatiana says. By the way, q -Stock wasn't our last time in Finland. No? No. Oh. We played uh, last year at Numerok. Oh, so sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. My bad. Uh, well, uh, judging uh, from how much you tour and uh, play gigs, uh, you must live for live performances. But how important are live performances for you, actually? <laughs> this is the most important thing. We play live music. It is not, well, the most important aspect of our music is live, live yeah, performances. Yeah. We are not uh, some sort of digital artists, you know. Yeah. We are here, we are live. Yes, exactly. We are not one-man band, 
yeah, just the person who sits home and records all this weird thing and just p puts it on the internet. No, we record music to play it live eventually. So it's the most important thing. Uh, okay, and uh, what makes a good live performance for you guys? What makes a good gig for you? Uh, uh, I don't know. Personally, for me, uh, I think the uh, the most important thing for me is uh, is the audience. I don't care of how good or bad the sound is. As um, like if the audience gives you a, a good feedback, I will I I will give them like even more of myself. Yeah, I com I completely agree that this audience crowd feedback is the most important thing. But also being a musician, well, it's some sort of self satisfaction of how well you perform. So it's also important just sound well sound well and hear yourself well and play well sometimes well this is where we do not probably agree with Tatiana sometimes a concert can be very very good but because you yourself I mean me myself just maybe made some mistakes or my my bass sound wasn't the perfect wasn't perfect yeah so you you still cannot have this full satisfaction it's like a a drop of tar in a barrel of honey, yeah, something like this. So it's it's a combination of factors, I think. Uh, okay, and uh, you re-released this year your 2014 self-released album uh, Cloud Factory. Um, how did you uh, end up, uh, you know, re-releasing this album? Well, it wasn't really our intention. Napalm Records, we signed with them in 2016 and they just, well, things with Kin of Everything have been really cool and they just came to us and asked why, why not, why, why can't we re-release that album? Because actually it didn't have well-deserved uh, promotion and uh, distribution the, you, you, people normally just couldn't buy it anywhere and uh, why not so if, if this is a good album we feel, we feel proud of it so that's why 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 don't we give it that well-deserved distribution and promotion which actually we we should have given it to in 2014 so after four years we just we just did it and I think it's good because there are a lot of people everywhere, all, all around the world, who who didn't know we had that album and who who accepted it now as a new one. I after it was re-released, I got messages from all over the world, and people were just saying, you know, compliments, like, "What what a wonderful new album!" And I I just I I was very confused because it is not new, and I just try to explain to them that it's not new guys it is four years old now uh, is there something different in the re-release is there some bones or uh, did you re-record something um, we didn't re-record we just remastered it oh. yeah especially for the vinyl vinyl version is completely remastered and it, it sounds different and uh, there are two bonuses two bonuses it's a very interesting fact uh, actually, now with bonuses, there are three different drummers on the album. The, most of the song studio versions were recorded with Eugene Mantulin on drums. And uh, one bonus is with uh, Dmitry Kim. And another bonus is with our current uh, drummer, Vladislav Olasevich. So there are three different drummers on, on one record. Uh, right, right. And uh, well, uh, King of Everything was released in 2016. So uh, when are we going to hear new music from Ginger? This year. Okay. And what kind of musical direction are you taking? <laughs> different. <laughs> it's going to be a bit different from everything we did before. Okay. Yeah. Can you spill the beans a little bit? Uh, what's it going to be? Uh, Hip hop. 
hip hop. Mainly. <laughs> That's it. Is going to be a rap rap album. It's not actually going to be an album. We are planning to do an EP. It will be a few songs at EP uh, this year, and well, uh, it's to some extent it's going to be slower, okay. slower and more groove, and more progressive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, okay, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the Ukrainian metal scene. Um, how do you see the scene today? How do you see? I often uh, answer this. How do you see? Well, I answer it too. <laughs> Come on. I, I don't follow Ukrainian metal scene. Well, because I, I stopped listening to metal years and years ago, ago, so I'm not really interested like frankly speaking i'm not really interested into heavy music in ukraine like anymore yeah because you know i lost i lost the spark <laughs> of it actually yeah talking about Tatiana, just there are there are only a few bands worldwide in metal which which she still listens to just a few so if it's, it, it is easy to say what she is listening to if you just hear that there, there are some blast beats in her earphones yeah, when she just listens to something in her earphones. Yeah, it's just either that or that or that, nothing else. Yeah, uh, Ukrainian metal scene is very easy to explain. I, I told uh, many interviewers about that, very easy. We, we, in short words, there are good bands. There are, I think, five good bands very very good i mean they can can kick ass worldwide but there are not enough metal fans there are not enough there is not enough audience it is not like in finland where every second or third person listens to metal not like scandinavia in general or not even like germany look at people who come to gigs everywhere here these are adults grown-ups and in ukraine it is not like that even those who go to concerts, they are teenagers. And we have this tendency, it's a very bad thing, that when people grow up, when they turn 20, 21, they just stop listening. They, they don't go to gigs anymore, they don't buy anything, they don't even illegally download new music, they just stop listening to heavy music. Because there is a prejudice that heavy music is only for kids. That's the problem. Okay. Uh, if we can uh, just talk a bit more about the scene. Uh, so uh, how was it, uh, well, more or less 10 years ago when you started? How hard was it, for example, for you guys to, you know, break through to, you know, international circles? Yeah. How was it? <laughs> 10 years ago. Was Nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Like, actually, internationally, we we broke those boundaries like I don't know, five years ago. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Our first first gigs outside of Ukraine. Well, it, it was tough. It is still tough. But I don't want to sound like complaining about that. No, it, we just how it was. We just worked hard, and we still work very hard and will keep working very hard in the future there is no other way it's only this way and no other so you just push and push and push and push forward no matter what yeah so we there was a point when we absolutely turned professional i mean in terms that we didn't we didn't do we stopped doing anything else on the playing music and at that point it was i think the most difficult period because we literally didn't have any money just we we could barely rent a place to live our accommodation and buy very very cheap food not to die starving so that was tough and but we managed to go through this and well if you ask me what what really make made us international is just i think our passion passion yeah, we just love this. Passion is my profession. Yeah, and we are a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just uh, love your attitude because 
it kind of seems that like bad luck follows the band somehow because you know some illnesses and people leaving the band that's normal but like uh, bus crashes you know depression uh your poor drummer who fell out the window and uh religious nuts you know pestering you at festivals and uh, things like that so uh your attitude is really admirable but uh how do you feel about this all like this bad luck that has uh, been to the band and still you know still you are going forward all the time it's a good question i used to say like i i stopped saying it i don't say it anymore but i used to say like this like uh, i love when it's go bad <laughs> when it goes bad you know uh, but um, you know what else is left oh sorry what <laughs> what else is left right remained remains what yes. what else remains yeah mm, grammatically it's okay <laughs> More or less, yeah. yeah like you have to support yourself if there's no support outside so we um, dedicated our lives to what we are doing right now and we sacrificed a lot of things in life so and there is no sacrifice we're yes still sacrifice. there is no turning back like you know there's no turning back we have nothing to lose and nothing but, will stop us yes but we have a lot of things to gain I yeah think. yeah and on the other hand i have to say that bad things happen but if we compare if we just look at all those things from a side and comparatively they were not as bad as it could be like have you heard what happened to rotting christ in georgia they were jailed yeah, yeah. just a few weeks ago and compared to being jailed that cancelled festival in georgia <laughs> a few years ago it was just nothing yes yeah, some nuts came there there were there was a crowd of rednecks with bats but nothing really bad happened yeah the show was cancelled but we were not in jail rotting christ were in jail so you see yeah? Yeah, yeah our tour bus our tour van was crushed we got in the accident yeah we we, we missed one show but, but we stayed alive yeah right? nobody was even injured and even the van we just had our radiator broken we were very lucky in that very situation it was actually fortune it was yeah. a matter of luck it was it wasn't misfortune yeah the the biggest tragedy which happened to the band like you said it's eugene yeah but he i mean ah it, it is a tragedy and this is the worst thing there are two bad things happened to us but this is one of two yeah and uh, but he's alive. I mean, things could turn worse. He he's alive and he's living his life now, and it's the most important thing. And they are and another bad thing happened to us. There, there is war in our in, in our home, yeah, home hometowns. But it was a push for us. We we moved out of our comfort zone, and we that was the point when we we lost everything we lost our jobs and we didn't have anything else anything else just playing music so it was another push so you see it depends on how you look at things yeah good and bad and bad and good yeah it's all yeah. very relatively yeah that's a great attitude and uh, well you know right now you have a lot of support from uh, all all the time growing fan base and it's uh, growing all the time so back to the positives then <laughs> <laughs> so uh you know now it's the cloud factories tour and then uh, later this year new album so how EP. does the ep EP. <laughs> we are oh, planning okay. to do an ep yeah ah okay okay yeah so uh how does the future look for the band so first uh, this tour then ep is it's is it uh, gonna be back to touring after the ep of course mm -hmm. yeah, it's gonna be back. bright and promising <laughs> bright and promising and open this is our future yeah and it's it's gonna be better and better and better yeah, i'm, so, I'm yeah. sure and the good thing about this like y you have no idea what future what what future will bring you you know and uh, like it will be a great surprise for us like every I time love, i love surprises yes yes so <laughs> all right amen to that and thank you so much and uh, break a leg tonight Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try. <laughs> Do our best. Thank yeah. You. Thank you.